Okay, welcome back. So today we're gonna have a look at a video I did a while ago for MTV. They had a show called Greatest Party Stories Ever. I think it did two seasons. This is uh, season one, episode three. The premise of the show was they get you to tell your greatest party story ever and they animate it. And I told a story about going to Australia with my best friend Dan and well, we had a crazy night. And my dad was like, where did that go? You can't see it anywhere. And I was like, this is a great idea. I haven't seen it since we recorded it six, maybe seven years ago, somewhere like that. And uh, I'm like, yeah, let's go through it right now. So let's watch it, see how it held up. Maybe I can uh, remember some extra details too. So my best friend and I uh, decided to go to Australia. We are you know, drinking beach like you do. We do that all day and then we went for dinner and had a few more beers. Probably been drinking for like 12 hours. Down under the influence, good pun for a title, I guess. I, I, right when I mentioned going to the beach, they show Brisbane. Brisbane is where the story took place, but Brisbane is definitely not known for the beach. Doesn't make a lot of sense. I wonder if I still have that cardigan. I do not, but I have a very similar one. Apparently, I like that style, so maybe I should do it in this. Probably too hot for today. Back to the story, um, this guy right here is supposed to be me. Yeah, that's pretty much how I look when I'm drunk. We were walking up to this club and Dan's trying to calm me down because he knows we gotta be sober to get by the bouncer. And I don't care, I think we're fine. I'm always fine when I'm drinking. We get up there and sure enough, Dan walks right in. No, Mike, you've had too much? No, no, I'm, I'm totally good. I'm like, I just, I'm, that's my buddy right there. He's fine, you're gone. And then my buddy Dan, being the good pal he is, see ya, <laughs> he gone inside. So I wander on. <laughs> okay. Um... Apologies for the accent. I mean, I, I think it's not too bad there, but it's it's definitely not the greatest. It's probably better than I can do right now. I love the quality Easter egg. Love that. The detail on the animation makes this makes this so good. So I wander on the corner and there's a balcony that's open to anyone who can reach it. And I think, no problem, I can get up there. I'm climbing, all of a sudden I hear, hey! And I just sort of freeze like a lizard or something. I don't know why. Hey! Hey, you've been there a while? Mate, we've been here literally the entire time. I think it's time you come down. They're gonna take me back to my hostel. So they let me out of the cop car and they're like, yo, you go right to bed. And I was like, uh, for sure, officer. And I know in my mind the whole time that there's a perfectly good bar right in the bottom of the hostel. And that's exactly where I'm headed. But as soon as I walk in, I order six Irish car bombs. I remember ordering them. I remember starting to drink them. That's the last thing I remember. So the next morning, I slowly open my eyes and I realize I'm naked and I don't have any idea why. I see this dude in the other bunk and he's staring at me, packing his bag. Yeah, this story is crazy and true, and I'm sort of reliving it right now as it's happening. Waking up in, in there, like I was on top of the covers. Being naked when I sleep is not weird, but waking up naked on top of the covers in a hostel with other people was bizarre. I didn't really remember getting back to the room, but I also didn't remember having any kind of crazy night. I remember not getting to the bar. That's really all I could piece together. So this was bizarre. When this guy was looking at me, I was like, what the hell is the deal, bro? He's staring at me, <laughs> packing his bag. Good morning. Yes, yes. Do you, uh, do you sleepwalk? Huh? Do you walk in your sleep? Oh, uh, sleepwalk, yeah, no. No, no, no. Yeah, you do last night. What? What are you talking about? Last night, when you come home, then you are very, very drunk, and then you come to the middle of the room. <laughs> I'll back it up a bit so you can hear all this in one run. I don't know what the hell accent this is I'm doing. This guy was from Estonia. And that is definitely not an Estonia accent. I think I just had to make, <laughs> I had to make villain from like a bad 90s movie accent. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's watch this again. This is interesting what he, when he fills me in here. Do you, uh, do you sleepwalk? Huh? Do you walk in your sleep? Oh, uh, sleepwalk, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, you do last night. What, what are you talking about? Last night, when you come home, then you are very, very drunk, and then you come to the middle of the room, and then you become naked. And then you go to my friend over in his bed, and he is very afraid, so then you climb off my friend, and then onto the windowsill, and you're going, oh! And then you run out the door 45 minutes. And then you come back, you knock on the door, open it, you say thank you, and then you go to bed, and now we are here. I think to myself, he has got to be making this up. So then I decide I might as well go downstairs. And then when the elevator doors open, that's when I knew the story was true. What did I do? Oh, mate, you remember me? Yeah, you're the bouncer from the bar last night. Yeah, I kicked you out because you was too drunk. You weren't going long enough, so you know, you came back and you was naked. Oh, God. So then you went up to the bar trying to order a beer and I didn't know what to do with you because you was way too drunk to punch and you're too naked to grab. So we kind of had to like corral you, but then you didn't know which room you were in, did you? 
It's like, no, I don't. Again. Okay, they really have this mixed around here. Uh, after I got kicked out of that first bar, the one that Dan went into, I never went back there. I went to the hostel bar, got the six Irish car bombs, met a couple girls, talked to some people. That's the last thing I remember that night, and I went to bed. It's that bar that I went back down to, the one in the uh, in the in the bottom of my hostel, right? Like I didn't go get in a cab naked and then go down the street to wherever I came from. That didn't happen. I just went back to the hostel bar. Everything else about this is very accurate, except they just got they just got that mixed up there. But I guess it makes more sense. I mean, it just makes it much. Uh, more streamlined. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do with you because you was way too drunk to punch and you're too naked to grab. So we kind of had to like corral you. But then you didn't know which room you were in, did you? I was like, no, I don't. I, I should have wrote it down on my arm. I don't know. So we had to knock on every door. Finally, some guy lets us in. And then uh, here you are now. I think it's time you uh, you head on. So apologize profusely and grab my stuff and I'm on my way. Ultimate walk of shame with all your gear right out the front door. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Other than switching the bar and the bouncer around, that's uh, how that went down. And you know how when someone retells you a story where you just totally don't remember it all and then they retell it to you and you start to go, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's pretty much what was happening. A little bit when the Estonian guy talked to me about it, but then once the bouncer was explaining it, uh, I was like, oh wow. Because I do remember going to a bunch of doors on, on my floor of the hostel and knocking like so late. It was like three in the morning. And then people being like, oh, and some people not answering. Uh, because those hostel doors work like hotel doors. Like when you left, the doors just go foomp, and they're just, you need a key card, you can't get back in. Uh, and that's one thing I love about this Estonian guy. I wish I knew his name. Um, thank you, man, because you sat up. Like this dude, he saw me go out, he knew I was naked, he knew I couldn't get back in with no key, he knew I'd be back. I mean, I'm naked, I won't be gone long. I mean, apparently I was gone like 40 minutes or whatever, but he sat up and waited when I came back, um, if I ever meet that guy again, I'm, I'm buying him a beer. I'm buying him two beers. I'm buying him, I'm buying him a steak dinner and two beers. I'm buying him two steak dinners and three beers. Oh, and one other fun detail: his buddy, who uh, he said I was over there like looking around, or whatever. When you come home, you're very drunk, and then you become naked, and then you go over to my friend's bed, and then he is very afraid. So then you go into the window. They skipped a whole thing there. When I went over to his bed, the buddy's like, "You went over to his bed, and his backpack was like, was on his bed as well." So I like reached over him naked and I was looking in his backpack for fucking whatever. Probably thought it was mine looking for clothes. And I'm pulling things out like this. So in the morning, all of his stuff was just scattered all over the room. And, I just, and then he was like hitting me, right? He's like, what the hell? Hey, like that hitting me. And then I was like, oh. So then that's when I climbed up onto the uh, the bunk bed and the window and I was standing in the windowsill and I was going, ah! And finally the Estonia guy threw his shoe at me and that's when I, oh, and that's when I ran out the door. Uh, so I understand why they can't have every detail of the story in this thing, but oh my God, so good to have a look at this again. The animation's amazing. I love this concept for a TV show. It should have ran 10 seasons. I think it only did two seasons. All the stories are great. Uh, you can find an archive of them pretty good, even on YouTube. So check them out, strongly recommend. But this one was fun. Wow, what a trip down memory lane and, and to have it animated. <laughs> I don't know what they expect when you go to Australia with your best friend, okay? What do they expect? You're, when, you're, when you're in your early 20s and you go to Australia with your best friend, this kind of shit goes down. Never blame the beers. Drink responsibly. Take care of yourselves. Like and subscribe. See you on the next video. Take care. My cardigan back on here. Maybe I wore this to tell the story because I thought it would make me look more distinguished and less like a drunk DJ. Maybe. I don't think it helps. I need a brandy and a pipe.